Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So you know, over the next couple of weeks, I kind of want to talk about you know, cryptocurrencies and a couple of different stuff. Um, but before we kind of dive into that, I kind of wanted to talk about NFTs a little bit, right? You know, what is an NFT? Kind of go into them a little about them and understand them, right? So an NFT or a non-fungible token, these are going to be cryptographic assets on the blockchain, right? And they have unique identification codes and metadata that distinguishes them from each other. Unlike cryptocurrencies, they cannot be traded or exchanged, you know, at equivalency. So this differs from fungible tokens like cryptocurrencies, right? Which are identical to each other and therefore can be used as a medium for commercial transactions. So the distinct construction of each NFT has the potential for several use cases. For example, there are an ideal vehicle to digitally represent physical assets like real estate and artwork. Because they are based on blockchains, NFTs can also be used to remove intermediaries and connect artists with audiences or for identity you know, management. NFTs can remove intermediaries, uh, simplify transactions, and create new markets. So one of the things I want to talk about is um, earlier, you know, uh, of this year in 2021 uh, in March. So a group of NFTs by digital artist Beeple, right, got sold for a little over 69 million, right? The sale set a precedent and a record for the most expensive pieces of digital art sold thus far. The artwork was a collage compromised of Beeple's first 5,000 days of work. Much of the current market for NFTs is centered around collectibles such as digital artwork, sports cards, and rarities. Perhaps the most hyped space is NBA Top Shot, a place to collect non-fungible tokenized NBA moments in a digital card form. Some of these cards have sold for millions of dollars. Um, not too long ago, uh, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey tweeted a link to a tokenized version of the first tweet ever written where he wrote, just setting up my Twitter. Right? The, the NFT version of the first ever tweet, it was bid up to like two and a half million. And I'm not sure what it sold for, right? Um... You know, but we, we kind of need to get into this and kind of understand NFTs, right? Kind of go into a little bit about them. So like physical money, cryptocurrencies are fungible, right? Basically meaning they can be traded or exchanged, you know, one for another. Um, let's use an example. Say one Bitcoin is always equal in value to another Bitcoin. So similarly, a single unit of uh, Ether is always equal to another unit. This fungibility characteristic makes cryptocurrencies suitable for use as a secure medium of transaction in the digital economy. NFTs shift the crypto paradigm by making each token unique and irreplaceable, thereby making it impossible for one non-fungible token to be equal to another. They are digital representations of assets and have been likened to digital passports because each token contains a unique, non-transferable identity to distinguish it from other tokens. They are also extensible, meaning you can combine one NFT with another to breed a third unique NFT. So just like Bitcoin... NFTs also contain ownership details for easy identification and transfer between token holders. Owners can also add metadata or attributes pertaining to the asset in NFTs. So, for example, tokens representing coffee beans can be classified as fair trade. Or, artists can sign their digital artwork with their own signature in the metadata. NFT has evolved from what's called the ERC-721 standard, developed by some of the same people responsible for the ERC-20 smart contract. So ERC-721 defines the minimum interface ownership details, security, and metadata required for exchange and distribution of gaming tokens. Then the ERC-1155 
This standard takes the concept further by reducing the transaction and storage cost required for NFTs and batching multiple types of NFTs into a single contract. So perhaps the most famous use case for NFTs, it's gonna, it's gonna be CryptoKitties. You know, that's one of the big ones, right? Beeple, CryptoKitties, stuff like that, right? But let's talk about CryptoKitties. It was launched in November of 2017. CryptoKitties are digital representations of cats with unique identifications on Ethereum's blockchain. Each kitty is unique and has a price in uh, in, in Ether. They produce among them, or they reproduce among themselves and produce new offspring, which have different attributes and valuations as compared to their parents. Within a few short weeks of being launched, CryptoKitties racked up a fan base that spent almost 20 million worth of Ethereum purchasing, right? Feeding and nurturing them. Some enthusiasts even spent upwards of $100,000 on that effort. So, while the CryptoKitties use case may sound trivial, succeeding ones have more serious business implications. For example, NFTs have been used in private equity transactions as well as real estate deals. One of the implications of enabling multiple types of tokens in a contract is the ability to provide escrow for different types of NFTs from artwork to real estate into a single financial transaction. Okay, well then, we got a good understanding of what's happening here and some some examples, but, I mean, why are they important? Like, why are NFTs important? Well, I mean, NFTs, they're, they're an evolution over the relatively simple concept of cryptocurrencies. You know, modern finance systems consist of sophisticated trading and loan systems for different asset types, ranging from real estate to lending contracts to artwork. By enabling digital representations of physical assets, NFTs are a step forward in the reinvention of this infrastructure. So, to be sure, the idea of digital representations of physical assets is not novel, nor is the use of unique identification. However... When these concepts are combined with the benefits of a taper-resistant blockchain of smart contracts, then they become a potent force for change. Perhaps the most obvious benefit of NFTs is market efficiency. The conversion of a physical asset into a digital one streamlines processes and removes intermediaries. So NFTs representing digital or physical artwork on the blockchain removes the need for agents and allows artists to connect directly with their audience. They can also improve business processes. For example, an NFT for a wine bottle will make it easier for different actors in a supply chain to interact with it and help track its, you know, its provenance, right? Production and a sale through the entire process. Consulting firm uh, Ernst & Young They've already developed a solution for one of its clients. So NFTs are also excellent for identity management. So consider the case of physical passports that need to be produced at every entry and exit point. By converting individual passports into NFTs, each with its own unique identifying characteristics, it's possible to streamline the entry and exit processes for jurisdictions. Expanding this use case, NFTs can be used for identity management within the digital realm as well. NFTs can also, you know, democratize investing by fractionalizing physical assets like real estate. It's much easier to divide a digital real estate asset among multiple owners than a physical one. That tokenization ethic need not be constrained to real estate. It can be extended to other assets, such as artwork. Thus, a painting doesn't always have to have a single owner. Its digital equivalent can have multiple owners, each responsible for a fraction of the painting, so such arrangements could increase its worth and revenues. The most exciting possibility for NFTs lies in the creation of new markets and forms of investment. Consider a piece of real estate parceled out into multiple divisions, each of which contains different characteristics and property types. One of the divisions might be next to a beach, while another is an entertainment complex, and yet another is a residential district. Depending on its characteristics, each piece of land is unique, priced differently, and represented with an NFT. Real estate trading, a complex and bureaucratic affair, can be simplified 
by incorporating relevant metadata into each unique NFT. So uh, Decentraland is a virtual reality platform on Ethereum's blockchain. It's already implemented such a concept. So as NFTs become more sophisticated and are integrated within financial infrastructure, it may become possible to implement the same concept of tokenized pieces of land, differing in value and location in the physical world. So I really appreciate you guys if you made it to the end of this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. You know, subscribe to the channel or not. Hopefully you guys got all or most of the information you were looking for. I really appreciate it. And so I'll see you guys in the next video. Y'all be safe.